Now we'll discuss childhood immunizations. This can be a sensitive subject, especially for first-time parents who have concerns about the safety of immunizations. It is important to be ready to provide detailed answers that will be both informative and comforting. The importance of children getting immunized cannot be overstated. We don't often see diseases like polio, smallpox, or diphtheria in the United States today because most of our children are immunized. If we stop immunizing them, these diseases will surely return, killing many infants and children or leaving them with permanent disabilities or chronic illnesses. One common concern is, are vaccines safe? According to the CDC, the United States currently has the safest, most effective vaccine supply in history. Of course, that doesn't mean they are completely without risk. Generally, side effects are very mild, such as soreness at the site of the injection, low-grade fever or crankiness. On very rare occasions, more serious consequences develop, such as an allergy, which can result in anaphylaxis. After an immunization, you'd monitor children very closely for serious side effects and have emergency equipment and medications on hand in case they develop. While side effects and reactions are frightening and some are harmful, choosing not to immunize a child might be even worse. In fact, it's really trading a lesser risk for a greater one, a dangerous disease and its potentially deadly complications. For example, there is no known association between the influenza type B or Hib vaccine and serious adverse effects. However, some people who get influenza develop life-threatening complications such as pneumonia and about 36,000 people in the United States die from influenza each year. And children are especially at risk for complications. Prior to implementation of the vaccine, type B influenza was a leading cause of bacterial meningitis in children under the age of 5. Bacterial meningitis causes death in 20% of cases and severe neurological defects in about 50% of children who recover from the illness. Measles can lead to pneumonia, mumps can cause deafness, and that's just a few examples. Some parents might question why immunization should be started so early, suggesting that they be postponed until breastfeeding is stopped. Breastfeeding is certainly beneficial and will help protect the baby from colds, ear infections, and diarrhea. But breastfeeding does not stimulate the baby's immune system to produce the cells necessary to fight the organisms that cause communicable diseases such as measles and mumps. And many of the diseases that can be prevented by immunization cannot be treated effectively or cured because they are caused by viruses. The fact is that babies are much more prone to developing disease because their immune systems are immature and cannot fight off disease-producing viruses and bacteria. A baby does receive antibodies from the mother prior to birth, but they will be gone by the time she is a year old and is exposed to other children and adults who are infected. Furthermore, many of the vaccine-preventable diseases are often more severe and pose greater risks to infants and young children than to older children. Waiting to start a baby's immunizations increases the risk for disease at a time when the baby's defense mechanisms are their weakest. Many immunizations are given in a series. Each vaccine stimulates the immune system to make antibodies to the organism for which it is given, such as the measles virus. After several immunizations, the baby will have an adequate number of antibodies to assure long-term immunity. A hepatitis immunization is generally given at birth. At about two months, the baby should receive DPT for diphtheria, pertussis, and tetanus, haemophilus influenza, and pneumococcal vaccines. Then she will receive additional doses at four and six months, 18 months, and between the ages of four and six years. Generally, measles, mumps, and rubella immunizations are given between the ages of 12 and 18 months. Giving a combination of immunizations causes no greater risk than giving one immunization at a time so the baby will need fewer injections while still building adequate immunity. Spreading them out is important because it takes time for the immune system to build antibodies to each disease. If the vaccines are administered too quickly, immunity might not develop. Ideally, the schedule should be followed as closely as possible. If, for some reason, things get off schedule, it's okay to finish the series without starting over. Just remember that, until children finish the entire series, they might not have adequate immunity to protect them from the disease. It won't hurt the baby to receive immunizations if she has a cold, diarrhea, mild fever, milk allergy, or an ear infection, or is taking antibiotics. The vaccine will still work, and it won't make the child's illness worse. There are times, although rare, when immunizations are contraindicated. Severe illness that can be made worse by the vaccine, allergy to any of the vaccine components, 
or during or immediately following the administration of blood or gamma globulin for severe illness or injury would require postponing the immunization. Infants and toddlers are generally given their immunizations into the mid to upper outside thigh area into the vastus lateralis muscle. As they get older, immunizations will be given into the deltoid muscle in the upper arm. Be sure to prepare parents for the procedure and its aftermath. Let them know the very small gauge needle is used. The child will feel a tiny prick and may begin to cry, but the discomfort won't last long. Some infants don't react adversely at all when they receive the first injection. Following the injection, instruct the parents to watch the child carefully. If the child runs a low-grade fever, less than 101 degrees Fahrenheit rectally, that's 38.3 degrees Celsius, or becomes cranky, the parents can give children's acetaminophen. If the fever is persistent or above 102 Fahrenheit or 38.9 degrees Celsius, they should contact the pediatrician. Remember that some parents, especially first-time parents, may be quite anxious about immunizations. Patience on your part and a thorough understanding of the subject will go a long way in easing their mind.